This video is not about buying a house. There's tons of video out there for that. This video is about the process before you even consider buying a home. Up next, five vital steps to make your buying experience easier and keep your sanity. So hang on. <laughs> figuring out and writing down how much house you could afford, you'll realize your life isn't changing or getting any better until you take the next step. How many times have you talked about buying a house and haven't even started to prepare? The process could be intimidating, but this video will teach you what you need to know to get started. So what is the first step before buying a home? Step number one, determine how much help you need. Ask yourself, what's prevented you from buying a home? cash the clothes needed or the monthly payment, these two things are what makes people buy homes. Not the sales price or the purchase price, it's the cash to close and the monthly payment. It's the biggest hurdle to get people into their homes. The monthly payment is already good enough because you're paying that in rent already. Just make the cash to close more reachable. Buying a house with no money down is possible. You can find a lender that works with the down payment assistance program but most home buyers will still need some cash for the down payment. The minimum down payment for a conventional loan is 3%, and for an FHA loan is 3.5%. If you're a little short on the cash to close, let's say two to $4,000, the lender has the option of waiving the escrow account, which reduces the cash to close typically by 1% of the total purchase price. On average, the closing costs are about two to 3% of the purchase price of the home. In some situations, Part of the closing costs can be rolled into the mortgage or even paid by the seller. Determine how much money you need and start saving now. Step number two, how much help you need on your credit. If you were financially challenged in the past and haven't updated or fixed your credit, do it now. Don't wait until you decide to buy a home to improve your credit. Fix or dispute any errors on your credit. Credit bureaus, they make mistakes too sometimes. And according to one study by the Federal Trade Commission, 25% of people had errors on their credit report. Knowing your credit report and credit score is a good first step. It's also crucial to look for errors in outdated information. If you spot any, it's a simple process to dispute and have them removed yourself. If you're not able to repair your credit yourself, there's professional resources out there that can help you repair your credit. Start now, even if you're not ready to buy. It may take several months, depending how financially challenged you were. It's so important to be one step ahead and know where you stand. For a conventional loan, you'll need a credit score of 620 or higher. For an FHA loan, it only requires a minimum score of 580. The VA doesn't require a specific credit score to buy a house with the VA loan, but lenders can set their own policies. Most lenders require a minimum of 580 on these loans. Your credit and financial history will determine what kind of interest rate you'll get. Your goal is to get the highest credit score possible. You'll get a better interest rate and loan terms. Make sure you understand what's needed for your credit before you get too ahead of yourself. Step number three, income and employment status. Lenders won't just want to see how much money you make. They want proof of a work history, usually about two years. This will make sure that your income is stable and reliable. During COVID lockdown, I remember lenders required an additional proof of employment right at closing in case you got laid off during the closing process. If you had the same job, the same income and pay structure, it's pretty straightforward. But if any of those things have changed in the past few years, you may face some challenges. But despite what you've heard, you can still get a mortgage if you switch jobs or even change industries. You just have to approach it the right way to seal the deal. Don't stress out about getting your income ready. It's all about gathering the right documents to show steady employment. If you're on payroll, you'll need recent pay stubs and W-2s. If you're self-employed, you'll need to be at least two years of steady self-employment before you can qualify for a home. If it comes down to it, you can use some of your IRA or 401k plan for a down payment. The rules are constantly changing though, so ask your accountant for your best options. Step number four. How much house can you afford? Before you speak to a mortgage lender, figure out how much house you can afford on your own. 
Having trouble coming up with the number? Use a home affordability calculator online to get a rough idea on how much of a mortgage you can afford. Take a deep look at your current debts and income and consider how much money you could reasonably afford to spend on each month on a mortgage. You may calculate $1,900 a month while a mortgage lender tries to convince you that you'll be just fine at $2,600 a month. Typically, experts recommend spending no more than 30% of your gross monthly income on housing costs. Let's say your gross income is $6,000 a month. And then your net income after taxes, insurance, and all that, let's say it's $4,300 a month. The $4,300 a month is what you live on. When a lender pre-qualifies you, they're using your gross monthly income to show you having more buying power at the maximum amount. It's hard not to get excited when you see that pre-qualified letter and that huge max loan amount. It's tempting, but follow your inner voice. You should never be looking at homes right at the top of your max amount. Why? Because you'll end up being house poor, and the goal is not to be house poor. You've seen them, you know who they are. You know, the ones giving you advice. In fact, 28% of recent home buyers say making monthly mortgage payments will be among the biggest money stressors for the next two years. Finally, step number five, interview lenders. One of the first decisions you face in the loan shopping process is deciding whether to shop on your own or hire a mortgage broker to do the mortgage shopping for you. Mortgage brokers are independent of banks or other financial institutions. They don't have money to lend. They originate, process a loan application, and work to get you the best loan by shopping many lenders. Another benefit of using their services is that they can explain the loan choices, help you select a loan, and help you navigate through the mess of paperwork required to get a loan. If your credit history and ability to qualify for a mortgage are marginal, a good mortgage broker can help you polish your application and direct you to the few lenders that may offer you a loan. Mortgage brokers typically receive a small percentage of the amount you borrow. You can pay them up front or you can have it included in the closing costs. If you do decide to shop for a lender on your own, it's important to stay one step ahead. Make sure you don't allow them to do a hard pull on your credit until you're ready to pull the trigger and commit to that mortgage company. A seasoned mortgage lender will do a soft pull on your credit history. The credit check is reported to the credit reporting agency as an inquiry. An inquiry typically has a small but negative impact on your credit score. Make sure everyone you interview doesn't do a hard pull on your credit. Why? Because once you finally decide to go with your favorite lender, you'll have five or six hard credit pulls without even knowing it. That'll cause your credit score to drop and kick you out of the desired interest rate. Every little bit helps. Keep in mind there's differences in interest rates and closing costs between lenders. Ask each one to provide you with a loan estimate, which has the loan terms, the projected payment, and closing costs. It's a universal format, so it makes it simple for you to compare lenders. Be leery, be skeptical, be careful with the fly-by-night internet lenders offering you a great deal. If it comes with low-quality customer service, it may not be worth it. Be skeptical if somebody offers you a deal that's way better than the other lenders. They may be baiting you with a loan that doesn't exist or that has hidden charges, one that you can't qualify for. It's so important to find a lender you can trust and will answer the phone when you call. Buying a house is a very exciting experience, but it could also be very scary as well. The right information can make all the difference in the world. Now that you learn how to prepare and put yourself in an advantage position, go get that house. Please like and subscribe so you get notified on new videos. And if you do subscribe, comment down below. Let me know what you want to see next. Remember, moving to Tampa, the Tampa Bay area, video's got your back. <laughs>